Thank you for cruising by for my daily devotions. It is Friday, July the 12th, 2024. We're going to look at Hebrews chapter 11, one of the great chapters in the Bible. A guy could spend months preaching on the 11th chapter of Hebrews. It's the heroes of faith. Whoa, great stuff. Um, Mark chapter 8, Proverbs 19, and 1 Chronicles 11. We read the 10th chapter of uh, Hebrews yesterday. Verse 19 says this, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, verse 20, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. When Jesus died on the cross, he opened for us entry. And we can enter confidently into the presence of of God in the most holy place. That was a t place in the temple. It was entered once a year by the high priest. We, we live there because of the blood of Jesus. We live in the presence of God because he takes up residence in our life in the Holy Spirit and symbolically and really, we live in his presence all the time. Something that the high priest could enter once a year to do. We live there all the time. Think about the blessing of that. In other words, we live in the presence of God. We know him personally all the time because of the blood of Jesus. Wow. Wow. That's phenomenal. Let's pray. Father, speak to us today through the uh, chapters that we're going to read. And I pray that you'd be, impact us and change our lives, Father, by the truth we find in your word. Do a work in us, Father, as we look at your word. Change us. Write a new law on our hearts and make us different because we heard from you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks even though he's dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith... It is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land. Like a stranger in a foreign country, he lived in tents, with, as did Isaac, Jacob, and Jacob, who were heirs with him of, his, of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man... And he as good as dead came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offering will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God would raise the dead and figured Figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on top of his staff. 
By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid to, of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as Pharaoh's son, as Pharaoh's daughter, excuse me. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ, still, you know, 1,500 years away from Christ, I think, roughly in that age. But he regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ because Christ was coming of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry, dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall we say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, ministered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions and quenched the fury of the flames, who escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned, into, was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, while, others, while still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned. They were sawed in two. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes of the ground. These were the these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Hey, wow, what a great, great, I'm going to have to do a sermon series on that puppy and it'll take a, take a while to get through it all. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Yesterday I started reading the wrong chapter in Matthew and yeah, we figured it out you know sometimes but you never get hurt by reading Matthew right Mark chapter 8 Mark chapter 8 during these those days another large crowd gathered since they had nothing to eat Jesus called his disciples to him and said I have compassion for these people they've already been with me three days and have nothing to eat if I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered, but where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground where they had given, where they had taken the seven loaves and given thanks. He broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the people, and they did so. They had a few small fish as well. He gave thanks for them also and told the disciples to distribute them. The people ate and were satisfied. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. About 4,000 men were present. They didn't count women and children. Could have been double that with women, and maybe more with women and children. And having sent them away, he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the region of Dalmanatha. The Pharisees came and began to question Jesus. To test him, they asked him for a sign from heaven. He sighed deeply and said, Why does this generation ask for a miraculous sign? I tell, the, tell you the truth, no sign will be given to it. Then he left them, got back into the boat, and crossed to the other side. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread except for one loaf they had with them in the boat. Be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out that the yeast of the Pharisees and watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. They discussed this with one another and said, it is because we have no bread. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not understand or are your hearts hardened? Do, do, you, 
have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember when I broke the five loaves with the 5,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? 12, they replied. And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? They answered, seven. He said to them, do you still not understand? In other words, I, I can meet your needs. It's still true for us today, folks. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked him, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home, saying, Don't go into the village. <laughs> Jesus and his disciples went on to the village around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Christ. You are the Christ. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at the, at the disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Then, Proverbs chapter 19, the wonderful book of Proverbs. We read every day from Psalms and Proverbs. When we finish Proverbs, we go back and start over at Psalms. When we finish Psalms, we go into Proverbs. Wisdom, we need wisdom. 19th chapter of Proverbs, some more wisdom. Better a poor man whose walk is blameless than a fool whose lips are perverse. It is not good to have zeal without knowledge, nor to be hasty and miss the way. A man's own folly ruins his life, yet his heart rages against the Lord. Wealth brings many friends, but a poor man's friend deserts him. A false witness will not go unpunished. He who pours out lies will not go free. Many curry favor with a ruler. Anyone is, and everyone is a friend of a man who gives gifts. A poor man is shunned by all his relatives. How much more do his friends avoid him? Though he pursues them with pleading, they are nowhere to be found. He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who cherishes understanding prospers. A false witness will not go unpunished. He who pours out lies will per perish. It is not fitting for a fool to live in luxury. How much worse for a slave to rule over princes. A man's wisdom gives him patience. It is to his glory to overlook an offense. A king's rage is like the roar of a lion, and his favor is like the dew on the grass. A foolish son is his father's ruin, and a quarrelsome wife is like a constant dripping. Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Laziness brings on deep sleep and shift, shiftless man goes hungry. He, obeys, he who obeys instructions guards his life, but he who is contemptuous of his ways will die. He who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will, be, he will reward him for what he has done. Discipline your son, for in that there is hope. Do not be, willing to, do, do, do not be a willing party to his death. A hot-tempered man must pay the penalty. If you rescue him, you will have to do it again. Listen to advice and accept instruction. In the end, you will be wise. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. What a man desires is unfailing love. Better a poor man, better to be poor than a liar. The fear of the Lord leads to life, then one rests content, untouched by trouble. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He will not even bring it back to his mouth. Flog a mocker, and the simple will learn prudence. Rebuke a discerning man, and he will gain knowledge. He who robs his father and drives out his mother is a son who brings shame and disgrace. 
Stop listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. A corrupt witness mocks at justice, and the mouth of the wicked gulp down evil. Penalties are prepared for mockers and beatings for the backs of fools. Wow. First Chronicles 11. First Chronicles chapter 11. This uh, tells us about David becoming king. And it goes on for a while. All Israel came together to David at Hebron and said, we are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even while Saul was king, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord your God said to you, you will shepherd my people Israel and you will become their, their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to, to King David at Hebron, he made a compact with them at Hebron before the Lord and they anointed David king over Israel as the Lord had promised through Samuel. David and all the Israelites marched to Jerusalem, that is Jebus. The Jebusites who lived there said to David, you will not get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, the city of David. David had said, whoever leads the attack of the Jebusites will become commander in chief. Joab, son of Zariah, went up first, and so he received the command. David then took up residence in the fortress, and so it was called the city of David. He built up the city around it from the supporting terraces to the surrounding wall where, while Joab restored the rest of the city. And David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him. People become powerful when the Lord is with them. A lot of people try to gain power without that, and they get they get hammered. We have a bunch of politicians who are about to, re, to figure that out. These were the chiefs of David's mighty men. They, together with all Israel, gave his kingship strong support and extended in, to extend it over the whole land as the Lord had promised. This is the list of David's mighty men. Josabim, the Hakmonite, was chief of the officers. He raised, up his, he raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed in one encounter. Next to him was Eliezer, son of Dodai, the Aho, Ahoite, one of the three mighty men. He was with David at Pasdamin when the Philistines gathered there for battle at a place where there was a field full of barley. The troops fled from the, from the Philistines, but they took their stand in the middle of the field. They defended it and struck down the Philistines struck the Philistines down, and the Lord brought about a great victory. Three of the 30 chiefs came down to David to the rock at the cave of Adullam, while a band of Philistines were encamped in the valley of Rephaim. At that time, David was in the stronghold, and the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem. David longed for water and said, Oh, that someone would get me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near, near the gate of Bethlehem and carried it back to David. But he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out before the Lord. God forbid that I should do this, he said. Should I drink the blood of these, should I drink the blood of these men who went at risk of their lives because they risked their lives to bring it back? David would not drink it. Such were the exploits of the three mighty men. Abishai, the brother of Joab, was chief of the three. He raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed, and so he became as famous as the three. He was doubly honored above the three and became their commander, even though he was not included among them. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, 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 was a valiant fighter from Kabzeel, who performed great exploits. He struck down two of Moab's best men. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. And he struck down an Egyptian who, had, who was seven and a half feet tall. Although the Egyptian had a spear like a weaver's rod in his hand, Benaiah went against him with a club. He snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Such were the exploits of Benaiah, son of Jehoiada. He too was famous as, was as famous as the three mighty men. He was held in greater honor than any of the 30, but he was not included among the three. And David put him in charge of his bodyguard. The mighty men were Asahel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shamath, the Hararite, Helez, the Pelonite, Ira, the son of Ikish from Tekoa, Abizer, the Anathoth, Anathoth from Anathoth, Sibachai, the Hushathite, 
Eli, the Aho, Ahohite, Mahari, the Netophathite, Heled, son of Baanah, the Netophathite, Ithi, son of Rebai, from Gibeah in ben Benjamin, Beniah, the son of the Pirith, Pirathonite, Huri, from the rape ravines of Gaash, Abiel, the Abrathite, Asmaphath, the Bahuramite, we're into those crazy old names again, aren't we? Elihaba Shalbonite, the sons of Hashem, the Gazanite, Jonathan, son of Shagi, the Hararite, Aharim, son of Sakar, and the Hararite, Eliphal, son of Ur, Hefer, the Mechalithite, Ahijah, the Pelonite, Hezron, the Carmelite, Neari, the son of Esbi, Joel, the son of Nathan, Mibhar, son of Hagri, Zelech, the Ammonite, Nahari, Nahari, the Barathite, the armor bearer of Joab, son of Zariah, Ira, the Ithrite, Gerib, the Ithrite, Uriah, the Hittite, Zodab, son of Ahlai, Abina, son of Sheza, the Reubenite, who was chief of the Reubenites and the 30 men with him, Hanan, son of Maacah, Joshof, Joshof, Joshaphat, the Mithnite, Uzziah, the Ashterathite, Shammah, and Jeel, son of Hotham, the Erorite, er 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 Jadiel, son of Shimri, his brother Joha, the Tizrite, Ethiel, the Mahavite, Jerabiah, the son of jo Jer Jerabiah, and Joshaviah, the sons of El Naam, Ithma, the Moabite, Elil, Obed, and Jasiel, the Mezobate. Wow, some more wild names. Amazing. Well, the Lord has spoken. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us today. Change our lives from the inside out by the truth we find in your word. Make us different because we heard from you, Father, every day. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.